So I've spent a good part of this past week testing and comparing my two baseline or base model cheapest 2019 MacBook Pros, the 13 inch which was launched a couple months ago and the brand new 16 inch which I picked up just last week. <laughs> and um, I'm just thinking about all the editing that I have to do. You see how long this video is. I want to get it out at 10 a.m. It is now 10.44 p.m. the night before, so who knows how this is going to get done, but it's all for a good cause. Hopefully by the end of this 20 minute video where we compare pretty much every important aspect between these two devices or laptops, you know, battery life, performance, form factor, speakers, keyboard, etc. Um, hopefully you'll know which MacBook Pro is the right one for you. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions as the algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people. So here we have both sizes of laptop. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is display size. And obviously they're in the name. We have the MacBook Pro 13 inch and the 16 inch here. Image quality across the board here is the same. We have the same brightness or nit count. It's 500 with both these displays here. Both have P3 color, the same contrast, the same sharpness, similar if not identical PPIs. The difference of course lies in the actual screen real estate available on both these laptops here. The 13 inch is by no means a small device. I use this for more than half a year to do school work and type up papers and respond to emails. And I was able to multitask and have full screen windows on here just fine. You know, I had enough screen real estate to get some work done. I did not feel cramped on here. Um, and I was able to do some, you know, video editing here and there and some photo editing with Photoshop pretty comfortably. But the MacBook 16 inch obviously shines when it comes to just having more desktop space. Multitasking on here is just really, really nice. It's almost like you have two full-sized iPad windows if you do multitasking or split-screen multitasking with the 16-inch MacBook. It's also really great if you want to do things like Final Cut editing or Photoshop work because you just have more access to the tools and different parts of the windows scale bigger than they would on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So ultimately, I'd say you can definitely get away with pretty much any task with the 13-inch MacBook Pro, anything from everyday tasks to, like I said, creative work. But if you're doing a lot of creative work or a lot of hardcore work on the go all the time and your laptop is gonna be your primary computer, then I would definitely consider this because having the extra three inches on the display really does make a huge difference in your workflow. And also before I forget to mention, the bezels on this laptop are by no means thick, but they are definitely thicker than that of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Apple really did expand the display and give it a better screen to body ratio. This has a little bit worse of that, but again, it doesn't really make a difference, especially when you're considering form factor, which is what we'll talk about next. So obviously the screen sizes and of course other components dictate the form factors here. 13 inch MacBook Pro is just a joy to use. After I picked this up and started using it on the go, I just realized how light and portable and awesome this is to just fit in a backpack really easily and to carry around. The 16 inch on the other hand is chunky, man. It's huge. It's not totally unmanageable or unbearable. You can still fit it in a backpack, but it's just not as convenient. And it of course is a lot heavier when you're toting it around or just holding it in your hand. So kind of circling back here with increased portability, you do lose screen real estate. And if that's important to you, then obviously consider the other laptop. But on the flip side with the 16 inch display, you do lose portability in terms of just the slimness and the weight and the form factor. This this is just so much more convenient to carry around. I would honestly consider it over its bigger brother, especially if performance and specifications aren't the most important thing to you here. Next up, let's talk keyboard experience between these two devices. And first of all, I have to talk about the touch bars because they do look different between these two devices. Um, first up with the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it is completely integrated. You have an integrated touch ID button, which is more glossy and a virtual escape key. Whereas with the 16 inch, you have an actual escape key, which was requested and you know missed by a lot of people or MacBook customers and a physical Touch ID button. It doesn't make that much of a difference to me. I actually do prefer to have an escape key, but this is definitely not a deciding factor between these two devices. But on to actual typing experience. With the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we of course get the butterfly switch keys, which are controversial because the switch is susceptible to getting dust underneath it and breaking. But this is the fourth generation of that switch and I have not encountered any problems with it. I do actually enjoy the slightly bigger keycaps from what I can tell and the clicky nature of them. This laptop does not offer a bad typing experience in the slightest, but I have to say in comparison
comparison to the 16 inch macbook pro it's just not as good this key design or the switch design is just inferior and apple figured that out which is why they updated the keyboard design in the new 16 inch macbook pro it's an all new keyboard but really what they did is they blended the butterfly keys with the old 2012 to 2015 macbook pro retina keyboard style and made this which is the best of both worlds i think it's still flatter than the older older generation keyboard but we now have scissor switches which makes it feel more like an actual keyboard with more travel and overall the typing experience is just way better on here and it's less susceptible to breaking so this is more convenient if you really depend on this device for your pro work you don't have time to have your keyboard breaking on you even if there is a replacement program so i would say the keyboard is much better on here and i really commend apple for you know reverting back which is not something they normally do um whereas with the 13 inch it has an inferior keyboard but it still offers a fairly decent typing experience and of course let's quickly talk trackpads here they are proportional with the sizes of these laptops and both offer the same experience. Obviously the one on the 16 inch is a little bit bigger, which is nice if you are doing a lot of creative work and whipping through timelines and having to, you know, manipulate a lot of programs, but it's definitely big enough on here. And I would have absolutely no problem using this size trackpad on the 16 inch laptop if Apple decided to manufacture it that way. Next up, let's talk speakers here. The 13 inch packs awesome speakers. I said that in my full review, they are very impressive for the size of this laptop. They offer clear and bassy sound and I just enjoy using them for media consumption and some content creation. But then the 16 inch, I mean, while this has great speakers, the speakers in here, of course, with the bigger size and the bigger drivers and the new technology that Apple has implemented, they'll just blow you away. I don't know if they're good enough to replace, you know, like actual speakers if you are like an audio professional, but they just sound amazing. The level of bass, the clarity, the volume, um, they have excellent surround capability. I think they have Dolby Atmos integrated into here. They are just phenomenal for multimedia purposes. I would say twice as good as those on here. Of course, they're bigger, which makes the sound feel richer. But yeah, I gotta say the 13 inch has really good speakers. The MacBook Pro 16 inch just has heavenly speakers, I have to say. Let's do a little quick test here with NCS's newest release. All right, here's the 13 inch. Here's the 16 inch. So yeah, I think that the speakers here speak for themselves. Oh sh that's a fing, uh, what's it called? That's a, that's a pun. Next up, let's talk performance here. And obviously the bigger, badder laptop that's more expensive is gonna have higher end components that's geared towards more intensive tasks. But I gotta tell you, the 13 inch MacBook Pro surprised me this year. It definitely packs some punch, even though its specifications don't seem super impressive. We have a 1.4 gigahertz quad core i5 processor in here with eight gigabytes of RAM and Intel Iris Plus 645 graphics and 128 gigabytes of storage. This is the baseline configuration, by the way. In comparison to the baseline 16 inch configuration which packs a hexa-core i7 processor clocked at 2.6 gigahertz 16 gigabytes of ram standard amd radeon pro 5300m graphics with 4 gigabytes of vram and 512 gigabytes of ssd storage on here and of course to quickly say 512 gigs on here is definitely better standard if you are importing a bunch of files to manipulate whereas with the 13 inch apple assumes the baseline model is going to be used more for you know like on the go email responding and document typing for students etc who aren't necessarily importing a bunch of files of course there are bigger configurations when it comes to storage but yeah it's nice to have 512 out of the box here baseline versus the 128 here which i have filled up very quickly in the past and another thing that i want to quickly touch on is the fact that the baseline 13 inch macbook pro only has two thunderbolt 3 ports which are usb type c as well which is great for charging and connecting a single dongle or something you can still get away with using just two i did so just fine and of course we have headphone jacks on both these devices whereas 
because with the 16 inch MacBook Pro here, we have four, which makes more sense because this is more for someone who might use this as a replacement for a desktop or might be working more on the go. And they would really benefit from having, you know, more than two Thunderbolt 3 USB Type-C ports to connect peripherals and drives and other accessories to their Mac. And also if you need more ports, you can always get the higher spec 13 inch MacBook Pros. But with the spec list out of the way, how do these laptops perform in the real world? Well, for everyday tasks like, you know, student oriented stuff, email responding, document typing, working with Microsoft Office, some photo editing, you should not see a difference at all. Both of the processors here push really awesome everyday Mac OS experiences. Um, obviously, you might be able to keep a couple more apps open here and more tabs open without having to refresh them with the additional eight gigabytes of RAM standard, but just once again, in my own personal experience, bringing these to school, using them for school or college oriented tasks, by the way, I will be doing a dedicated video on that topic. Um, once again, I've noticed no discernible difference in terms of opening apps and scrolling through Chrome and Safari and sending messages and once again, emails, etc. But of course, when it comes to intensive CPU and GPU oriented tasks, it's gonna be a different story here with the hex core processor in here with a dedicated GPU, more RAM versus the quad core in here with integrated graphics and less RAM here. And with that said, let's talk about an intensive task many MacBook users do, which is video editing, which really does push these laptops to their limits. So I edit my videos off of an external SSD. This is a Samsung T5. This is a 500 gig drive, but I actually have a two terabyte one that's upstairs connected to my iMac. But anyway, when I connected my main drive with all my projects on here, I decided to do some rendering tests and just playback tests between these two devices. And of course, my testing is only scientific to a point. I would recommend if you want a really precise test, go check out Max Tech. He has amazing MacBook Pro comparisons where he goes over different configurations with graphics and RAM variants and really goes into the nitty gritty with a bunch of codecs and resolutions. I've done some pretty basic testing here, but I think it will give you a good idea as to what performance you can expect with both these devices here. So when it comes to video editing and playback with the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it's totally possible. I've done it before. I've edited a roll. I've edited 4K and 1280p, which is what I usually upload in. And it's perfectly fine. You can do video editing with this device despite its lower clocked um, processor, which does boost and give you more you know, power when you need it. This can video edit for sure. But of course the experience is substantially slower in comparison to the more specced out powerful 16 inch MacBook Pro. But that doesn't mean you're gonna be pulling your hair out if you decide to edit on this device. I've done it. I use a really specced out iMac 5K, which is a Core i9 and Vega 48, all the insane specs. And the editing experience on here really didn't bother me despite that. But when it comes to editing and playback on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, obviously it's better because the display is much bigger. You have better access to the control panels and the window scale bigger so you can actually see where you're doing. Um, of course, the trackpad is bigger too, which makes manipulating the timeline easier. And then the six core i7 and the dedicated GPU in here, the 5300M graphics really does accelerate the process and makes it a much smoother editing experience. Um, so if you're going to be doing primarily video editing with your device on the go and around the clock, even if you're connected to an external display, this is going to be the way to go, especially when it comes to rendering times, which I'll talk about next. So in these tests, I rendered the same six minute project, my iPad mini is the best value video or whatever it's called, which did consist of 4K footage, although I did render it at different resolutions here. So rendering that project out at 2560 by 1280, which is the typical resolution I upload my videos at, it took the 13 inch MacBook Pro nine minutes and 19 seconds to render it completely and have it ready to upload. Whereas with my MacBook Pro 16 inch, it was rendered in four minutes and 52 seconds. And something that I noticed is that the fans ramp up in here when rendering H.264, whereas with the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the fans don't really turn on at all. Rendering the same project at 4K and H.264 with the 13 inch MacBook Pro yielded a 10 minute and 20 second rendering time. Whereas with the 16 inch, it did it in eight minutes and 25 seconds. And again, when I rendered the same project at 4K in the ProRes codec, it took eight minutes and two seconds for the 13 inch MacBook Pro to get that completely rendered out. Whereas the 16 inch MacBook Pro took only three minutes and 22 seconds and did make use of the dedicated GPU. I could hear the fans spinning up in here. So I guess when you are rendering in ProRes and any other codec, this is when the fans kick on and the hardware in here really is put to use. So as you can see, the playback and the rendering times are much better on here, which makes sense if you are primarily using this laptop for video editing. But once again, if portability is important to you, 
if you're rendering in lower resolutions like 1080p, and if you're doing video editing here and there. I would honestly get the 13 inch MacBook Pro and deal with the slower aspect of it. Um, if your life doesn't depend on it, if you're not a freelance videographer or you're editing video for a living, um, this is totally fine. But if your profession relies on video editing or really any higher end tasks like AutoCAD and just rendering in general, this is gonna be the device that you want to take advantage of. And very, very quickly in regard to gaming, Macs are not designed for gaming, okay? You shouldn't use them for gaming. Buy a gaming laptop or build a PC if you wanna play PC games. But if you happen to be buying one of these laptops, it's gonna be your only device and you wanna play some Windows games here. Do not buy this. This has integrated graphics. If you want to play like League of Legends or I don't know, some, you know, non-intensive game, then obviously this will work. But if you want to play some triple A titles or something like Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5, this is going to be the laptop that you want. So if you need a Mac and you also want to have some power to play some PC games via Boot Camp, I actually got this to boot Windows with an external SSD and I'll have a whole video about that with the 16 inch coming soon. But if you want to play some intensive PC games, then this obviously is going to be your best best bet, but it's not going to be the best experience anyway, because this is a Mac after all. And with everything discussed thus far, we can now finally talk about battery life here, because you want to know, these are portable devices. How are these going to fare with everyday tasks and intensive ones? So the 13-inch MacBook Pro has a 58 or so watt-hour battery, whereas the 16-inch MacBook Pro has a 99.8 watt-hour battery, which is really close to the legal limit and of course will accommodate the bigger screen and the beefier components on the inside. But when it comes to everyday performance, I've noticed absolutely no difference. Apple rates this at like 10 hours or so of just screen on time when it comes to video playback and just general word processing. The same can be said here. Apple rates this at 11 hours. Both drain with those tasks at a similar rate, I have to say. So no worries there. But when it comes to intensive stuff, when I was rendering the same video project between these two devices, which did put the CPU and integrated and dedicated GPUs to the test, the 13-inch MacBook Pro lost around 5 to 6% of its charge, whereas the 16-inch MacBook Pro lost around 3 to 4% of its charge. So that might not not seem like a big difference, but when you are rendering on the go and doing intensive tests, that will add up and this device is inevitably going to last you longer. So I guess the moral of the story is if you want a slightly better battery in everyday tasks, then go with this one. And if you need to be doing intensive tasks and have your laptop not die on you, the 99.8 watt hour battery with the 16 inch MacBook Pro will suit you very well. So all in all, my final recommendations are if you are somebody who doesn't need the biggest screen, you don't need the beefiest specs, you need a laptop that's portable that will serve well for some photo editing and maybe some light video editing here and there and you know for school tasks and word processing, this is the laptop you're gonna wanna get. I absolutely adore it and honestly, I might end up keeping this over this if this device suits my needs better. But if you're somebody who will really benefit from, you know, having a bigger screen on the go, you need more battery life, you need much more performance, and you need to be, you know, doing intensive tasks all the time, and you might want to game a little bit, then definitely consider spending the extra money and going with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Even the baseline one, as we've shown here, the baseline MacBook Pros really do perform admirably, and I do highly recommend them to people who don't need the most insane processing power. But of course, if you can spend a bit more money, I would recommend configuring your Mac to your liking, maybe getting a better processor, more RAM, and more storage. And that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. I'd really appreciate it. Once again, if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. I have a lot more MacBook Pro 16 inch content coming up, particularly an installation of Windows 10 video on an external SSD, and then of course, gaming with the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the Radeon graphics inside. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.